The Sega Dreamcast is an awesome console. It was fantastic in 1999 and 2000, and up until the system was discontinued in 2001, I was a huge fan. I had gone all in on the Dreamcast on the night of September 9th, 1999, spending more than $700 between the console, accessories, and launch games, so I was definitely all in. I was so happy with the console that even when the PlayStation 2 came out in October of 2000, I really didn't have a lot of interest. I was happy to wait around for PlayStation 2 supply to refill and meanwhile just kind of kick around with my dream, my Dreamcast at least until word came down late January, early February of 2001 that the Dreamcast was being discontinued. That's when I took my Dreamcast and all of the games and all the accessories. I brought them down to my local video game store, traded them in, and bought a PS2. Why do I bring up the Dreamcast right now? Well, Sega is celebrating its 60th anniversary. We just got word that Sega is going to be releasing a Game Gear Micro, or four versions of it that have four games on it apiece. So I thought now would be a good time to pull out some Dreamcast games from the collection of sealed games and open them up and talk about them a little bit. Because the Dreamcast is fantastic, uh, and because I've rediscovered it after many years of not having it, uh, I thought now would be a good time. So, let's take a look at the first of the two games. I do have a pair. This one right here is Sega Marine Fishing, released in 2000 for the Sega Dreamcast and uh, developed by WoW Entertainment. This is a sequel to Sega Bass Fishing. Now, <clears throat> in real life, I can't do fishing. Fishing, besides the fact that I hate worms, uh, I don't have the stamina to kind of sit for hours at a time and wait for something to maybe nibble, nibble on a line and then try to reel it in. That is not my thing. So to get an arcade-style fishing game like Sega Bass Fishing, Sega Marine Fishing, or Konami's Fisherman's Bait for the PlayStation, that's more up my alley. And this game is a lot of fun to play. Again, this came out in 2000. The back of the case says, hook one and hang on. And it looks very cool. Got that late 90s attitude going on there with some colorful screenshots as well. And as we take a look at the information on the back, it says here, Sega Marine Fishing, the sequel to the Smash Arcade hit in Dreamcast All-Star Sega Bass Fishing, features all the thrills and action of deep sea fishing, complete with blue marlin, sailfish, tarpon, tuna, and the dangerous Mako Shark, or Mako Shark. I never understand which way to say it. I think Final Fantasy VII Remake screwed me up there. The bullet points include fishing famous spots from around the world, superior fish AI, because fish really need artificial intelligence, whatever. They react realistically to conditions in the deep sea. Dreamcast enhancements, more fish, more stages in mini games, online rankings and more. Of course, those online rankings don't work anymore. 12 different lures and 15 different varieties of fish in real-time underwater camera angles. So yes, this is the direct sequel to Sega Bass Fishing. And that, my friends, is pretty darn cool. It did take 20 blocks of memory on your VMU, so you need to make sure you have that available. It also does work with the fishing controller. And it also does work with a jump pack so you can feel that vibration when you catch that fish. All right, without further ado, let's see if we can get this guy open. This particular game is sealed really, really well. Uh, and it may take me a little bit to get the... There we go. Get down the bottom. I want to do this on camera. So, oh, I think I screwed it up. There we go. Game's upside down. All right, so kind of take that off of there. There we go. I got this at Retro World Expo last year, and this was $9, which isn't bad. I, this might be a re-release, I'm not sure, but it's not an All-Stars, so that's kind of neat. Uh, on the inside of the game case, and let me just turn this around so you can see, there is the... Silver Sega Marine Fishing CD. We also have the instruction manual and a little Sega advertisement here. I think, yeah, Play to Win. This came in just about every Sega first-party game. There's a sweepstakes here. There is a uh, there is a warranty fill-in, and I'm not going to go over that this time around, I don't think. Although it's... Uh, it is interesting talking about like what kind of computer you own. You have a PC with a 266 megahertz CPU or a PC with a 300 megahertz or higher CPU. That's pretty interesting. Uh, the games that they're asking whether you own or the systems are Saturn, Genesis, Nintendo 64, the Nintendo Dolphin, 
Uh, the fact that the Nintendo Dolphin there is kind of cool. Um, that was before it was called the GameCube, of course. Super Nintendo Entertainment System, the PlayStation, the PlayStation 2 in Roman numerals. Uh, so that's pretty neat. And you didn't have to put postage on this one. Thank you very much, Sega. I can't mail this in anymore, but I would if I could. So let's take a look at the instruction manual here and see what Sega Marine Fishing is all about. And one of my favorite Dreamcast games is featured on the back of the case. Oh, boy. This is Virtua Tennis, a fantastic tennis game, even if the facial modeling is a little scary. I actually played this not only on the Dreamcast, but on the uh, in the arcade as well. Uh, this is in black and white. It's not in color, so there's not a lot to see. And this is set up just like a lot of the other Sega first-party manuals. A lot of flow charts, some screenshots here and there. Uh, let's see if it talks about the different gameplay modes here. So we have arcade mode is here, original mode, uh, free fishing, mini game, and fishing training are all here, plus total weight training, casting training, and lure action training. There's also an aquarium to check out the fish that you've caught. And there is a network option back when the dial-up modem and the Dreamcast was working and the Sega network was a thing, uh, you could certainly check your scores. And that was really one of the cool things about having online connectivity back then was checking your scores against leaderboards from around the world and around the country. I always thought that that was pretty neat. So because this is marine fishing and not bass fishing, you're fishing in more of a deep sea, so you have different, uh, you have different types of fish here. We have skipjack tuna, bluefin trevally, Great Barracuda, Great Trevally, I'm probably pronouncing that way wrong because I don't fish. Sailfish, Napoleon fish, uh, Dolphin fish, Yellowfin tuna, Dogtooth tuna, Amberjack, Blue Marlin, Permit, Tarpon Stingray, and the Shortfin Mako. So plenty of fish, plus there are more fish under the sea. What else can you catch? I recommend this. It is not very expensive to get as long as you have a Dreamcast, and if you like Sega Bass Fishing, you will like this. I like this a bit more than any of the other sequels that came later, to be quite honest. This was closer to the Spirit of the Arcade original, which I greatly appreciated. All right, one game in the books. Let's go ahead and get to our other game. And once I put this in the case, there we go. So this other game I was really excited to find because it is a game that I like playing on the original PlayStation. Uh, it is a game that is a racing game. It's an arcade racing game, and it is all about destructive carnage. It's kind of like a spiritual sequel to Destruction Derby. This is called Demolition Racer No Exit, which is a game that was published by Infogrames, and I believe it was developed by... Um, oh, gosh. I, I might be able to find out when we look on the inside. I, I forget the name now. Um that's what the back of the case looks like. Go out and buy a copy of Demolition, Demolition Racer as soon as it hits the stores, according to Daily Radar. Remember them? Maybe not if you're if you're too young. Uh, incredible cumulative real-time damage effects with smoke fire, hoods and trunks flying, tires wobbling, and cars showing hardcore damage as it happens. 14 torturous tracks designed for full metal contact. 16 new and improved wrecking machines to race, including the high-impact hearse. That's a thing. Insane Last Man Standing Demolition Derby Bowl Matches. That is the price of admission right there. If you've never played a Destruction Derby or Demolition Derby game, that's why these things exist, and they are a blast to play. One-hit kills also, with Death from Above being an option, as well as T-boning for top destruction scores. There's also a really good, at least in my opinion, uh, licensed soundtrack with... Uh, tunes from Cirrus, Fear Factory, Imperion, and the Coffee Boys here. Um, again, you got to understand this is 2000, so that's the kind of music we were listening to back then. It may not be as good to uh, people who weren't around back then, but to me, uh, those kind of tracks are very, uh, they, they match up well with this particular game. It's kind of like when uh, Rob Zombie's Dragula was in like every game for a period of like three years. It's the same kind of thing. So let's go ahead and get this guy opened up, and we'll take a look at what's on the inside with this. Again, this is another game that I really recommend. Um, some of the race handling can be a little wonky at times, but it's an arcade racer, so sometimes that takes a little bit of getting used to, uh, but it's not undoable, and the game looks great. And I believe, if I remember right, it's been a while since I played it, uh, it runs at 60 frames per second, which is awesome, considering that we were coming off of a generation where we were running games at 30 frames per second at best, for the most part, when you're talking about, uh, 
when you're talking about uh, last generation games on the PlayStation and the N64. And even that 30 frames per second might have been difficult on the N64 for a time. All right, so now that I've got this open, I think... <laughs> Unfortunately, unlike PlayStation 2 games, uh, PlayStation and Dreamcast games with the cases don't always open well. But I do have it open finally. And I'm trying to take this off. There we go. This one ran me a little bit more. This one was $15. And again, I got this at uh, at Retro World Expo last year. We open up the case. Uh, there isn't anything extra on the inside. We do have a red Demolition Racer No Exit Disc. We also have an ad for Test Drive Le Mans on the back of the instruction manual. This red on the, uh, on the disc reminds me of some of the... Uh, midway releases that also were in that red like i think that uh i think that well, I, I don't remember which one it was i i think it might have been uh ready to rumble boxing might have been in that red but i'm i'm going off of memory and that's not good at 5 a.m so here is the manual right there and the manual is in black and white it is not in color it does use the drum pack which is cool if you're doing a racing game uh there isn't a story of course because this is just a racing game uh, we do have different modes of play. We have single race. Um, we also have league play, demolition league play, country, arena, city, industrial, and endurance league. So you have different styles of play, which is cool. can play two players, which is nice. Um, there's not a lot of screenshot action here to show you, but if... Believe me when I say that if you have a Dreamcast or even if you have a PlayStation, to be honest, uh, the Demolition Racer games are very much worth your time if you like arcade racing games with a little bit of an edge to them. We saw this come back with uh, Test Drive Eve of Destruction for the PlayStation 2, a game that has gone way up in price. Um, but this kind of keeps the spirit of the Destruction Derby games from the PlayStation alive quite well and is a game, again, that I do recommend. The Dreamcast was a fantastic console. It is a console that is now, I cannot believe that it is 20 years old. Uh, but we're going to be doing more 20th anniversary and 25th anniversary celebrations this year. The PlayStation 2 turns 20 in October, and we'll be doing a special for that. And the PlayStation, the original PlayStation, turns 25 in September, and I have a game that will be opening for that as well. In the meantime, my friends, I... Really appreciate you taking the time to watch. Please take care of yourselves and each other, and we'll do this again soon. Until the next time, my friends, take care.